Bruh, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, bruh, I appreciate y'all, bruh. Man, I appreciate y'all for, for, man, just showing love on the vids, bro. Showing love to me in the DMs, bruh. Like, bro, y'all are the greatest people alive, bro. And I just want to let y'all know how much I appreciate y'all, bruh. I can't give a dollar to each one of y'all, bro, but I could give every single one of y'all a thanks, bro, for just being there every single day for me, bro, every single night for me, bro. We on this grind for a reason, bro, and we just grind it together, bro. Let's run it, bro. You feel me? Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Hold on. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. All right. Today, we got black Christians versus black atheists, bruh. Okay, I don't want to hear no bull junk in this, bro. Okay, or I'm going to go off on somebody, bruh. No cap. Is Jesus, um, is his appearance in the Bible? Uh, I believe they describe him with, like, big bronze hair. and hair was yeah. His bro, feet was black as brass, and his hair was out of wool. James Harden? <laughs> James Harden? <laughs> LeBron? Hi, I'm Gen, and I explore social and controversial issues through both sides. <laughs> Today, I'll be moderating this hold middle on, round episode. Hold on, that boy speaking, though. That boy speaking. Hold on, that boy speaking. Bro, we don't care about gender or nothing like that, but he's speaking facts, though, bro. He's speaking facts, my boy. I'm just of saying. Black Christians versus black atheists. We're Let's talking about the connection between race it. and religion, why Christians leave the church, as what well the? as the communities that exist within and outside of the church. The first prompt is the black church shaped black culture. The black church shaped black culture. If yep. we just look at the beginning, bro, y'all watch, y'all, y'all ever seen a lot of oh those black people? Bro, y'all ever seen Elvis, bro? Come on, man, come on, man. If you haven't, you need to. Met up in church. Bro, wait, this is an hour, bro. Ooh, I don't know if I can do this for an hour, bro. I don't even know if people are gonna even watch this, bro. Just in order to, you know, talk about and you know, fight for the freedom of black people. And so we have a lot of gospel music in our culture as well. I know you guys have probably heard some. Even the atheists probably grew up hearing a lot of gospel. I'm trying not to pause. Even now that shapes our culture to this day. Well, I think it was even further back than just civil rights. It goes yeah. back to slavery. It goes back to so many things as a part of our history. Yeah, I think the black church fundamentally has helped African Americans stay together. Even today, the black church serves as a central hub for African Americans to uh, to gather and share ideas. Even in my family, Facts. Uh, the black church was definitely pivotal for our development. I think the black church contributed to the, the culture of black folks, just keeping us together as best we could. As hey, we have seen this dude before, bro. He been, in, he been in a couple of these joints. The church could, I think, giving us hope. I think it was also a place of education for most of us as black folks, a place for talent and freedom of expression. So I definitely think it has a, a bond around us. Yeah, I 100% agree. I feel like there was a community significantly found um, within the church for the black community. Um, like you said, education and music. Um, there was a lot of belief, especially with what was happening during the slavery time. There was a lot of unity that brought people together and brought them hope um, in worshiping together and glorifying the Lord through that. So I believe that it definitely has shaped the black um, churches and the black community today. Yes, uh, the black church has played a pivotal role into um our time here in the United States as black people, um, but the black church, I believe, doesn't define us as black people. Is it necessarily the greatest thing for us? I definitely don't believe that. Well, I would piggyback off of that because uh, the black church, as we understand it within our context, is one- Bro, if you don't agree with this, why are you sitting down? Like, bro, what? But we, what we forget is that black people and black Christians are not a monolith. So. For instance, there are 45,000 plus Christian denominations. I happen sure. to be a Roman Catholic, you know, however, I do have family that are a part of the black church. Right. So I think that it definitely does have its extent, but it's- Let me be real with you, bro. I haven't seen a, a black uh, Catholic in a minute, bro. Like, this is crazy. I, I've never seen a black Catholic before ever. They've always just been right. I mean, uh, white to me. They've always just been white, bro. All encompassing as you've out as well. I'm curious, would you say the same thing about black atheists as not a monolith? Well, of course. I mean, I, I think whenever you paint anyone as a monolith, you've already shut down all kinds of conversation. So there's many reasons why someone may choose. It sounds like you guys might have grown up in the black church or been at least exposed yes. to it. There are many reasons why someone chooses to leave and they're not all the same. Yeah. I'm curious, what is that distinction for you two? Well, I'm a black atheist and I'm an agnostic atheist, meaning that, you know, maybe there's something out there, but most likely, 
there's probably not a Jesus or Jesus up in the sky or Jesus coming back or anything like that that's going to come and save us. Me personally, um, I study a sector of African spirituality, right? The, re, uh, the way that I happen to stumble upon that, um, I started to ask myself questions like, who do my ancestors worship, right? What is the point of uh, religion in general? How to proliferate around globally, right? And um, doing research, you start to see that uh, Christianity became synonymous with white supremacy mm. around the fourth century with Constantine uh, the emperor, right? In which they made it uh, the Roman national religion. If you refuse to adhere to his uh, Christian rule, then you would be beheaded. So I think that uh, historically speaking, that boy speaking, Christianity has been used to oppress and enslave a lot of people globally. I think it's great that you take it that far. Wait, what in the world? Wait, hold on. What this Asian dude doing here, bruh? Oh, oh, he's the host. Oh my gosh, bro. I'm like, wait, why is there an Asian dude in the middle and this supposed to be for black people? But now nah, we go, we go, we go. I'm, I'm tripping, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. But, but I think you have to really separate <laughs> theology from black theology for, for the sake of conversation. Because I think that when I talk to a lot of atheists and agnostics, we speak from the vacuum of black experience and we already understand in America, number one, that's troubled water, right? Globally, it's also troubled water. I think a, a broad blanket would cover that it's suppressed people of color. We don't see ourselves in scripture. We don't see ourselves being you know, told. And when we did, when we were learning these stories in church back in slave times, we were told that our God wanted us to be slaves. So that very thing was utilized to suppress us. For heaven's sakes, the KKK came out of the church, right? So we do have a problem and we can't just say the church is the end all to be all. It's a complicated conversation. I With us, to, I, so then, I, let's, let me just put a pin on that. Uh, if you, let's get to the three gears. And, mm -hmm. Anyone with ten thousand yeah, dollars in credit card debt or personal loans may qualify hey, for debt relief. I ain't getting no YouTube, yo YouTube TV, bro. I don't give a dang. Yes, yeah, so I disagree. I already got bills to pay, bro. I don't need no more to pay. Culture, especially as in the affirmative. Bro, a woman who looks like this, I am very surprised that she is atheist, bro. She looks just like my grandma, bro. This is exactly what my grandmother looks like, bro. And she loves Jesus like crazy, my boy. Entirely. Because what that does is it, it ignores our ancestors before the transatlantic slave trade. It ignores the fact that they had their own cultural beliefs and that there were many contributions that black folks have made to this country that were not centered in Christianity. When we think about Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who was the founder of Negro History Week, who was Harvard educated, who had deep criticisms of the black church, his roots were in free thought and, and criticism. Lorraine Hansberry, who wrote A Raisin in the Sun, uh, Zora Neale Hurston, the famous author, and other black folks who were not religious at all, just because it is prevalent does not mean that it has entirely shaped our, our communities for the better. And I think that we have to be mindful. Dang, why don't we learn this in school, bro? I don't even know who the freak that is, bro. Like what? Of the diversity that has been within our communities that has not always been rooted in Christian and religious faith. Our communities have ignored the non-religious, atheist, and humanist presence for far too long, simply because there is a prevalence of Christianity in our communities. I actually, I actually agree with it's you. It's so crazy too, because like, bro, your mom or your dad, as a black parent, and then you from the trenches, will tell you to follow Jesus, bro, but there's so much destruction and shootings and rebelling in the black community. It's so crazy, bro. Like, why is it like that? I know that, I know that white people kill each other and things like that and like, but like you hear it more from the black people's side and the black people are the ones that's mostly Christian. Like we love God the most, bro. If I go over to anybody's crib in my family, anybody, bro, they'll tell you that they love God, bro, every single time. But where they come from, it's just, it's just chaos and, and, and insanity, like, what is that? Like, why y'all not? Why y'all suckers not reading the Bible, bro? You feel me? Because I don't think Christianity is supposed to take hold of somebody's culture and completely, like, you know, change it into something completely different. I think that Christianity welcomes different cultures. Um, I think that. Bro, why I look like bro got a shade on? Like, like. Like this is where, uh, let me stop. True biblical Christianity looks at somebody in a different culture and says, hey, 
even though you're of this culture, even though you believe in uh, different things or whatever, you can still be welcomed in the kingdom of God. Well, I find that very interesting because as someone previously said, there are what, 45,000 denominations of Christianity? Mm -hmm. Some that might be more welcoming and some that are totally damning. Forget the, forget the denominations, bruh. Read the book, okay? Like Jesus never talked about no denomination. Paul said, do not pick and choose who is your favorite. Do not pick and choose who, bro. We got one denomination, bro. That's Jesus Christ died for us, bro. Stop with all this denomination stuff, bro. This is literally, bro, God is spirit, bro. You can worship and love God anywhere and everywhere you would like, bro. It doesn't matter. And we're talking about the same book. We're talking about the same text that has been interpreted, some for that has been used in the positive and some that has definitely been used to enslave our ancestors, mm -hmm. disenfranchise our communities, mm -hmm. and also look at things through a lens that has demoralized us. So we, ha we cannot ignore that um, oh, as far as yeah, historically. I want to speak so. to something going back to something that you had said um, about. Hey, look, 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 she did. Hold up. Where am I? Oh my gosh, bro. What? She just here to be here. You feel me? She just here to be here, bruh. Nah, she probably gonna say something. We only seven minutes in, so. Your belief systems now within the uh, African spirituality and stuff like that, which I think is wonderful, actually. And I don't think it's actually too far from some of the things that we might believe, you know, as Christians, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a, a, a constantly erroneous thought that Constantine came and did all of these things. Christians were being persecuted in Rome and in, throughout, you know, the, the, the Middle East far before Constantine. Right. And then that doesn't I mean, if we're going to talk about the roots of Christianity, how do you explain the Tawahedo Church, the Ethiopian Ta Tawahedo Church, which was never anything that was forced upon Ethiopian people? She done done her research, bro. Oh, she done done her research, boy. I'm telling you, bro, make sure you do your research, bro, because dang, bro, I wouldn't know how to rebuttal any of this. I would be like this, too. My boy, I'd be like, I mean, hey, I don't know if you're right, but you sound right to me. You feel me? <laughs> in fact, in the Bible, you have in Acts where an Ethiopian was baptized and went to spread the gospel to all the people. Where do you think he went as an Ethiopian? You know, so there are roots. Of but she like, bro, I don't want to hear none of this, bro. Look, she, she put her in her place, bro. Yeah, she shut up. She shut up. Which are far beyond this conquering of Constantine and all that stuff. But what I will say in complete agreement with all of you, with everyone here, is that Christianity as a whole has been abused. It has Absolutely. been taken, it has been yep. used to demoralize just yep. because there are people who are infiltrators, just there, there are people who will use the word of God against us as people. It does not invalidate what he said and what he taught. Mm -hmm. This narrative of Christianity is the white man's religion. Jesus Christ was white. Facts. I mean, that's just, that's just a fact. To respond to that, I think that my point was that in the fourth century, it became synonymous with white supremacy mm -hmm. right so it did not spawn but that doesn't mean okay but just because it just because it's white supremacist doesn't mean that the book is false bro or that that jesus is white in the bible you feel me like it's still bro the bible is still something so sacred and so beautiful bro like jesus came and rebuttaled everything bro like he like yo th this is what you do instead of this you supposed to love your neighbor you supposed to love your enemies bro don't hate your enemies bro like let god let god rebuttal and do his thing and you step aside and and you keep walking on bro you turn the other cheek bro you feel me like you got to under like people don't read the book bro they just hear other people and what they got to say you feel me like bro jesus was speaking like he was speaking straight facts every single time bro Every single time he like, yo, the most important and even Paul, he said the most important commandment is to love your neighbor, bro. Jealousy creates hate. And what does hate do? It kills, bro. It kills, bro. The Bible is so beautiful, bro. At the end of the day, bro, it's, it's beautiful no matter what, no matter what color you are, no matter what color Jesus was or anything like that. It's still beautiful, bro. And it's still morally right. And it still gives you morals to add to your bag, you feel me? Like, dang. So um, Christianity, as you said, was actually in Africa, right? But I believe that today, I believe that black Christians, and of course, I'm not here to disrespect any of you guys, mm -hmm. but I believe that um, the modern right. iteration of Christianity, right, spawning from the Judeo-Christian uh, uh, Judeo belief system, 
has forced black Christians to speak a lot of multiculturalism, to put, to put the idea of unity above the idea of blackness, right? And when you put unity above blackness, we are the ones who suffer in America. So I feel like a lot of black Christians, they don't want to talk about the history of Christianity. I believe that they want to ignore a lot of facts when it comes to Christianity. I believe yeah. that they don't want to look at it as a whole, yeah. right? So I do believe that a lot of problems do occur. Especially, from- especially the people who genuinely don't care to believe in it. You feel me? Like, I don't know why, you know, but like, who cares, bro? At the end of the day, bro, like, I mean, it like I would hate that if Jesus was actually white and looks like that, cause like, dang, like, why couldn't God, you know, make us look sexy and junk? You feel me? Like, that's a sexy man right there. But at the end of the day, like, it don't really matter, bro. Like, it really doesn't, bro. At the end of the day, Jesus saves, bro. Jesus saves and Jesus loves everybody, no matter what you look like, bro. He gonna wash your feet. It's facts. Can you explain that a little bit further? That difference between the multicultural unity and not putting blackness ahead of it. I'm so glad you asked that, Jay. Yeah, let's go. Let's absolutely. Go. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I think that um, w. I think that the George Floyd protests are a perfect, perfect, perfect example to look at. Tons of unity. Tons of unity when George Floyd died. 2021, record police killings. 2022, record police killings. 2023, record police killings. When people join our family, well, he, got, he, he got a little shook out. He was like, oh, we, can we talk about this? Oh, shoot. Uh, it's probably getting hot in there for this boy. You feel me? It's getting deep, bro. You shouldn't have sat in the middle, my boy. Love <laughs> Be humanitarian. When people join our fight, it tends to become about unity, and it tends to become about how uh, not racist America is. And, it, and uh, black issues and black politics tend to get washed away. Yeah. So I have a lot of black Christians who yep. say, let's accept everybody. Jesus told us to turn the other cheek, but they are killing us, bro. Yep. The world, like, like globally, Africans are, are, are being oppressed. Which bro. is crazy because we love Jesus the most, apparently, bro. Bro, we in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But after service, we going crazy, bro. Like, where, what, like, what? No wonder people don't want to be... It, over there in the trenches, bro, in, in the deep areas, bro. Cause sucker, we praising God, you know what I'm saying? But at night, we killing each other. Like, bro, what? What do you? What else do you want? Like, bro, what? This doesn't make any sense, bro. They're not applying that book to themselves at all, bro. To their lives at all, bro. Literally, bro, them suckers, them suckers camped up in bed at night, trying to freaking, bro. They camped up at in their bed at night. Trying to figure out how they go survive, bro. Couldn't even get that out. You, you're making face. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I made a lot of faces, but <laughs> I mean it's really good stuff, and I don't even know where to, where to go back and <laughs> address yeah, some of the things. It's really yeah. good stuff. So theology, right? Just in a broad sense, is usually defined by either one referring to nature, experiences, tradition, and maybe scripture, right? Just on a broad sense, it could be broken down even further. So I think that when we come to a place as black folks, we come and we lean heavily into our experience, right? And if all of these different sources are places where we would lean, then, we, then our pillars are a little bit out of balance if it's solely based upon what we've been through, right? So I think that we have to be a little bit more balanced. When you said that the church hasn't impacted culture, I think the church has, impact, has not impacted what we bring to church. We still hand clap, toe tap, dance, shout, run, throw wigs and everything else when you go to certain churches, right? Because black culture expresses itself a certain way. What it has done to us, and I agree to your point, is it has limited our free thought. Yo, I cannot believe these short terms. He's speaking, bro. It has limited our free thought. Oh my gosh. Right? Because yes. we have learned to come to church and check our minds at the door and just do church the way it yep. does, you know, the way it goes. Yep. And if you don't get happy and shout, you ain't been to church, you ain't seen Nah, God. for real, bro. Like, bro, back then when we was young, bro, if you're not speaking in tongues, bro, you're not, you're not Holy Spirit filled, bro. You're not loved. You looked at as like a degenerate, bro. You looked at as like, sorry, the, the, the doggy, the doggy, the doggy, the doggy. He just chilling, bro. But, bro, yeah, like, you was looked at as, like, bro, like, what you doing here, bro? Like, you feel me? Man. So when you, when you describe theology, you left out one word, which is evidence. You know, when we think about the rules of how we, how we learn, how we train, how we educate ourselves, in theology, especially within the black church and black theology, we are dismissing evidence where is the proof well i think because that coming back to the prompts you know the idea that the church bro where'd she come from what in the world 
Bro, I haven't seen her the whole show, bro. What in the world? Culture is really community did because we didn't have spaces. So the only space that we could exist in with any kind of freedom or away from watchful eyes was being able to worship and practice. That's why we melded a lot of the practices that we had, especially in African uh, religious traditions to Christianity so that we could continue worshiping and having these different traditions continue throughout our community. So black people have always survived and continue to advance and evolve through sticking together. Church just happened to be the place where we could kind of do that without having other people mm -hmm. in our business. It was functional. Let's move on to the next prompt. We all possess- Dang, that was a long prompt, God dang. Capacity for compassion and connection. No wonder why this junk long. Bro, who cares, bro? We don't care, bro. We don't care, bro. Get your money, but not from me, my boy. Go on somewhere with this, bro. Go on somewhere with it. God dang! No wonder this bit long is free. That I'm Christian. Okay, wait, hold on. What? As a black person, people always assume that I'm Christian. <laughs> no facts. That's facts, bro. It's like oh, facts. God, God bless you. Have a great day. And I'm like, oh, bless your heart. I. uh Bro, that does not, oh my, bro, that does not, oh my gosh, that does not mean you Christian, bro. Oh my goodness, bro. Oh my goodness. That is not, bro. Just because, just because I say God bless you does not mean nothing, bro, which I don't say that junk, bro. That's so cringe to me, bro. Sometimes, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> keep like in a situation where like, if I'm at church, I'd be like, yeah, God bless you too, my bro. You know, I don't, I don't ever start with God bless you, bro. Like what in the world? Like that's for if you sneeze or something. To yourself. It's just a lack of your, your own personal bubble, right? You're in your own space. It's funny how every atheist came up. Nah, bro, sometimes, sometimes bro, people think I'm like Muslim or like, or I don't know, actually. I don't know. Cause like, it depends on where you are for real but like christians literal christians don't ever think that like i'm christian too like they just think i'm just there you feel me like they already look at me as like oh this dude bad as heck bro he man he man this dude don't love god but he probably from the trenches he probably be, like that's how i feel like people think of me when i come around bro like bro i love god bro usually people do, do like they put it down what you're what you really do bro honestly you are thinking that everyone is thinking according to the way that you are. So you need to start expanding your bubble by asking questions, engaging in conversation, and then allowing other people to come in and have a conversation with you as well. So I live in the Bible Belt mm. in Atlanta, Georgia, and I often get that I look familiar, that I have a familiar face, and especially- Because you look like my grandma, bro. You look like everybody's grandmother, bro. Literally, she probably somebody's auntie. Other black women and almost the, the follow-up question is, have I seen you in church? Because that's where I spend all my time. Mm -mm. And one of the number one questions in the South is what church do you go to? Mm. Not even that you, whether you're a believer or not, it is yeah. the default is what church do you go to? And, and that is because- Like bro, I don't go to no church, bro. All these churches booty, bro. All these churches are not fun. They do the same exact thing. They talk super low, like bro. I'm bored, bruh. I'm bored. I need something else, my boy. I need something different. Even according to research, the majority of the black community is Christian and religious. Uh, Which is crazy! And we the craziest ones, bruh! We love God, but they the craziest ones, bro. We will fight you on a Monday night, bruh! In areas of the South I'm telling where, you, uh, Christianity is extremely prevalent and that's all that is within their circle. Like right. you said, the bubble. So it assumes, it is assumed that everyone thinks the same. Yeah, um, to add to that, uh, my father is actually a pastor mm -hmm. in, um, in Texas right Dang. now. Dang, oh, I know he had it tough. Oh, I know he had it tough. Bro, if your dad a pastor, bruh, And um, whenever I uh, just converse with a, with a black person, it's always, God bless you. Oh, I'll pray for you. It's always, um, it's, it's always a, a religious undertone on, under our conversations. Yep. I just don't tell people I'm atheist right away, just so I can just keep the peace. Cause it's just a good 90% of us are, are religious. This is what I'm saying, bro. Christians need to tighten up, bro. It's not just about judgment all the time, bro. Be happy, be free. Go to the world, bro. Like, bro, you don't have to tell them that you Christian, bro. 
Just let them experience your love and your joy, bruh. Literally. Bro, this is how I used to be too, bruh. Just go straight into judgment. Oh, blah, blah, this. Blah, blah, that. Da, da, da. Like, bro. They do not care, bro. They do not care. I promise you they do not care, bro. They just want to have a good time, bro. Show them your personality, bro. Show them who you are, bro. Let's have fun. Let's be lit. We ain't got to talk about God every single second of every day, bro. Even though, you know, that's 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 the best talking. But I'm just saying, bro. Just not even Christians, Muslims, or things like that. When I say I'm an atheist, or something like that. They a lot. Some people shun me. They'll just say, "Oh, I'll just pr oh, I'll pray for you." Or they'll literally. Feel like, oh, I, I feel kind of. I feel bad for you. Kind of. Yup. Kind of vibe sometimes. Cause bro, I used to do the same thing, bro. I used to do the same thing. The same thing kept getting dumped to me too, bro. Every time, bro. Every time, man. I, hey, I'll pray for you, bro. I, I'll make sure you you good, bro. Cause I I know you ain't like, bro. What? Like, bro, just just because you got God doesn't make me doesn't make you better than me. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense, bro. At the end of the day, God gonna treat everybody fairly. It don't matter if you're killing, stealing, rock, uh, lying, none of that stuff, bro. You gonna be treated fairly. It's just what it's just with Satan, bro. He was treated fairly. Satan still goes to God, and God still and Satan still puts in the request, and God is either like no. Or yes, it doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't matter if you're an angel or nothing like that, bro. You still get it fairly, bro. Every time. And um, so do you uh, get that me, more mostly? Let me let this dog out of here, bro. Don't ask to come back in. Don't ask to come back in, my boy. In between black people or other races, say that to you as well. It's majority mostly black, black, people. black people. Yes, yes. Yeah. mostly black. Do you guys? find yep. it like an offensive stereotype or is it more so just like well i think that it goes back to the last question and it goes back to how uh the black church has shaped our culture yeah. right i believe that during the civil rights era of course you had almost every single civil rights leader being um christian there's tons of gospel music in the hip-hop yeah. kanye chance the rapper sure. you know what i'm saying they're constantly uh um sampling it so i think that um within black culture you kind of cannot escape it yeah Digital Facts. agencies. But you can't Listen escape up. it ever, bro. Gina introduces the power of. Bro, you won't ever be able to escape it. It's everywhere. Bro, I was just watching the emoji movie and the Satan and. I mean, the devil and the. The, the um the angels was in there. Like, you can't escape. You can't escape this, bro, because it's, it's God, bro. It's, it's God and, and what people believe in. You feel me? Like, God is real, bro. And God is everywhere. It doesn't matter what it is, bro. He. What it is or where it is, bro. He's everywhere, bro. It doesn't matter. I think the reason you why see God every day in a person every single day, bro. Answer no to this question is not necessarily because of who I am, but where I'm at. Because I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'll be outside a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be at a bar with some of my friends. Like, uh, this past year, I went to a pride parade. You know, I've been to clubs to dance and hang out with some of my friends. Facts. And like, bro, just because really we assume. Christian, just because we Christian don't mean we, we can't go outside. You feel me? That, pff, facts, bro, come on, let's be real, bro. Let's be real. That I'm Christian because I'm in some of those environments. But even though I'm there, that doesn't mean that I'm- Look, he like, uh, 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 I don't know about this one, my boy. Look, he, he got some kids at home that's probably like, dang, I, Man, I hope daddy don't come home, bro. He gonna talk about how I'm not the best Christian and everything else, bro. Like, look, that boy be, look, he like, uh, I don't know about this one. <laughs> Less Christian or uh, more Christian or more holy <laughs> than now. I'm just in the world, but. Yeah. But again, we talked about, and, and I mean, uh, not yep. to just, not to bring off what happened on camera, but uh, when we introduced ourselves, you said amen. I did. That assumed that perhaps uh, that we were gonna be in agreement with that. I mean, even though, there were Christians and atheists in the room. Even whether it is explicitly Christianity or mm. some form of belief in itself, it is often, more often than not assumed that as black folks that we all share some form of belief in some sort of deity. Can, yeah. I, can I say something so, to you? Sure. What was your name again? Mandisa. Mandisa, beautiful name by the way. Thank you. I'm just gonna say this, like that has less to do about my assumptions about you and just more about the way that I personally talk. Mm -hmm. So like even if I'm like around like an atheist or whatever, mm -hmm. like it's not really a personal thing or an assumption for me to be like, amen. She got an up, that, upside that's down. That's how I talk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh. I have a most. Oh nah. Oh, nah. 
But to me, like, I don't know, bro. I just see this as a symbol for real. Like, even if it's upside down, bro, it's for the Lord, bro. I don't give a dang, bro. This is what Christ died on, bro. And even then, they be talking about that one dude who didn't want to die upside down on this cross or something like that. I don't know, but... It is what it is, bro. Muslim friend who's around. Bro, I remember when, bro, I was in church. Suckers would get on us for wearing just a cross necklace, bro. Like, bro, we can't wear a cross necklace, bro. Like, what in the world? Where, where in the Bible does it say that? Where, what? I can't wear a cross necklace, bro. Oh, you can't wear a cross necklace and, uh, and, and say that you're a Christian just because you wear a cross necklace doesn't mean you're Christian. Like, what? Then what, bro? Like, I'm wearing this for the style, my boy. I don't give a dang, bro. Like what you talking about, bro? Me and they want to say mashallah, but I don't, I don't. Nah, think yeah, facts. To me facts. Because they have a different religious belief. Thing. Like, bro, a Muslim would come up, walek, uh, salam alaikum. I'd be like, hey, walaikum salam, brother. Like, what's good, my boy? You feel me? It's not all about like, you feel me? Like, I don't go up to them and be like, amen, or like, yeah, God is good. But like, bro, they'll, bro, they will always greet you how they feel like greeting you, bro. It doesn't matter, bro. And I'm just like, oh, I'm here with the culture too, bro. Like, what's good, bro? And I, I say I mean, amen a whole lot. So I'm guilty of that too. Yeah. But it, and it isn't a thing to say like, God bless you. Amen simply means I agree. Yeah. You know, yes. or we're in agreement, right? It doesn't necessarily mean Look, God. now he don't want to say it. Look, look, now he don't want to say it. He like, God dang it. Now I can't even say amen, bro. Because then she just pointed it out. God dang it. It's not the other. So to me, it's like, if I agree with something, it's like, yeah, amen, whatever. But it's not to offend to say, oh, we're all Christians. Mm. And it's not the other. That's just the way I speak. But should that now... Um, prompt you to think about why, why it is that do we it? do what we no. do. Mm -hmm. Why not, though? I mean, oh, if, if oh, 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 she getting a little attitude now. You better calm it down now. Y'all better calm it down. That's why the Asian dude here, bro. Just in case somebody trying to throw hands inside, bro. You need to chill, my boy. If you're in community with other people and they may not share the same practices or they may not share the same customs as you do, yeah. is it possible? Bro, and sometimes, bro, we do forget that, bro. Like, I'm not going to cap, like, bro, sometimes I'll be forgetting that, like, some people, they didn't grow up where I grew up. Or some people, they don't know the things that I know. You feel me? Like, that's what I, that's what I didn't understand when I was younger coming, coming up as a Christian as well, bro. Like, most people, they're like, bro, yo, I, I'm not Christian, bro. I'm Buddhist, bro. Or I do this a certain way, like, but I do this a certain way. And that's where, like, heads just bud. And then you're just like, oh, why is this person so dumb? And then they're like, why is this person, like coming at me like this bro like i have no clue what's going on and i'm like well dang i forgot that like yo i read this and you read that so our our beliefs and and decisions that we make are completely different you feel me to perhaps think that that might not be the most appropriate thing to say at the time no because we live in a culture that is very much about relativism and your relative truth and being who you are and standing in that and what you're asking me to do is not stand on who i am it's not about personifying what someone says that's just a greeting or a passing or, a, or a, a statement of agreement. It's not wrapped in that. And if, if everyone else in this culture gets to stand in a relative truth, be who they want to be, you know, say who you are, then I should be able to do that too without thinking that I'm offending someone. But we're really not. As yeah. Americans, we're, you know, yes, we're black. But some people take things a different way, you know, just like her, like, she's taking it in a different way and you got to be like, yo, like, I understand where you're coming from, but this is not what I'm trying to do. You feel me? Like, at the end of the day, bruh. Americans, but... Bruh, her name Coco? They don't really want any of us to have individuality. Ultimately, it's like, get up, go to work, do your labor, come home, don't question it's 2024. anything. 2024, why would you be living in that reality, though, of oppression? It's yeah. 2024. We because so many people have, are still open. But I mean, but and that's a mindset thing, right? Because no, I, no, it's not. I wouldn't. That's say not a mindset. That that's not a mindset. Because that's what I got to do. Like, where, where, what you doing? Where are you from? Like, you feel me? Like, that's life. That is literally life, bro. Literally, we gotta wake up, get our jobs done wherever we work, and we get our things done. She must. She gotta be some type of like American activist or something, and she just got money now, like. She probably, she probably done went, did her nine to five and got up somehow, some kind of way. And now she's talking like this, bro. What? Yeah, but with our strong me. personalities, each one of us on the stage live in a, a mindset of, I feel so oppressed today because I'm black. What I'm going to do? I'm black today. No, we get up and we're going to do what we have to do. We're going to go for what we want. 
regardless of our spiritual beliefs. I don't I don't think yeah. that that's a that's an argument to stand Correct. on. Yeah, I'm going I'm to be real too. Yeah, with with race, with race, yes, but we are oppressed because suckers got to get up every single day, enslave ourselves away just to get just to get seven hundred dollars to pay rent. That's a thousand dollars. You feel me? Like eh. that's like a victim mentality. I do. Yeah. Do yeah. you involve yourself in the Black Power movement? What do you what do you mean by that though? Do you involve yourself? Bro, y'all gotta chill out, bro. Calm them down, my boy. Calm them down. It's starting to get heat. It's starting to get hot up in here. Bro. I can feel the heat black sizzling. Politics. What does that mean? Because well, there are there are essentially issues. do you prioritize black politics and black community? I prioritize politics that I believe in. Okay, so that's why so you feel that way. That's not why not really like it's because there are black politicians no. that I agree Yo, with. Yo, chill, bro. Let her talk, bro. Let somebody talk, bro. Calm it down, bro. We're not trying to have no shooters in John in here today, bro. Let's calm it down. Look, she already getting tight. Y'all guys need to chill, bro. Let's chill out now. Come on now. Why is this prompt so long, bro? And anything. You cannot dim diminish what I'm saying on no, that. No, 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 no. I'm not diminishing what you're saying, right? But you said something objectively, mm -hmm. right? You said that that is a victim mindset. Mm -hmm. And it's not. And if yeah. you educate yourself on the black power movement and what is going on with Africans globally, you wouldn't have that mindset, right? I think that... Look at the age, dude. He's like, oh, what you got to... Oh, no, okay. I actually wanted to bring the conversation <laughs> to a little bit of a personal experience. I remember a time when I was in eighth grade, I was speaking to my uh, social studies teacher. His name was Mr. Fada. And I told him I was Christian. And he was like, oh, oh, that's cool. What kind of Christian are you? And I was like, Baptist? I got baptized. Am I a Baptist? And he was like, <laughs> and he was like, you know what, Tyler? You're probably one of the loud ones, right? And then I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? We are loud. No, no, no. I, no. <laughs> I accepted that immediately. Like, and that was yeah, kind of yeah. one of my first um, we are. I am loud all the time. microaggressions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And religious microaggressions. Yep. Right. Right. And I think that um, the parallels between how toxic it can get when you come across other Christians, even in the black community, is the same way. Yeah. Right? I feel, like, I feel like I can tell a beautiful black person who just became a friend that I missed the bus or my phone is off. And they're like, the devil's after you. Pray. No, for real, though. For real, bro. Oh my, bro, bro. My mom, bro. My mom caught me smoking weed, bro. She caught me smoking weed, and she was like, "Oh, the enemy. Th this is why your life is this way, bro. What? What? What are you saying, bro? What, bro? I'm like, bro. My life, like, what? My life, good as fuck, bro. What you mean, bro? What you mean? Oh my, bro, this get me so tight, bro. Bro, yeah. no, yeah, no. yeah. literally. How do you like? Literally, it's like, what are we yes. talking about here? And a lot of family members, yes, bro. hit me up, and they're like, "Yo, Tyler, I need your help. The devil's after me." And after we breathe and we calm down. It's like if we put these problems on paper, it has nothing to do with spirituality at all. Yeah. It has right. to do a lot with preparation, yes. right? Yeah. Mindfulness, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and facts. I mean, yes, it does have something to do with spirituality, yes. But if you can center your mind, this is why this is why God says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. And let the peace of God that surrounds all understanding. Guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, bro. That's what God's talking about. He's like, yo, center your peace. Start praying. Start giving thanks to me, bro. It's going to help you relax. It's going to help you to not be anxious no more, bro. Christians be forgetting this. They just go straight to judgment. Yo, this is why your life this way, bro. Uh, you, you, need to, you need to be with God. What, what's going on with you? Bro, like... No, encourage me. Don't judge me. Encouragement goes a long way, my boy. And just financial planning. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I want to go back to something real quick. Yeah. And, and that's, again, it's the, the, these narratives, right, where you ask me, do you believe in the black empowerment movement? It's such a broad thing because you still have not told me anything specific, even though that was beautiful what you, sh what yeah. you shared. You are painting every black person as a monolith. No, I'm not. Yes, when you ask those questions, because I, as a black person, I'm expected to vote a certain way because I'm a woman. I'm expected to believe a certain thing. And it, it, it gives no room and it denigrates each of us as an individual and what we think. And I think that's where the problem is. Hey, both sides, for real, for real, like they speak in the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how they like, I mean, I'm, I'm bro, you feel me?
this is. It's like, I can okay. care about black issues, yeah. but we may not care about the same exact things or see things differently, but it doesn't- Look, hey, I'm telling you, look. She just here to be here, my boy. She just here to listen. Hey, get your education, my girl. You feel me? Get your education. Cause these, hey, these people, they know what they talking about. Get your education now. Make me any less black than you. What was your name? Roxy. Roxy. Let me ask you a question, Roxy. <laughs> right? Cause, cause you articulate yourself very well. And I'm not here to, um, to, uh, to make you qualify your blackness or to question for, uh, your blackness. That's not what I'm here at all. Mm. Right? He's trying to take that black card, right, buddy. You know what I'm saying? We're not trying to take your black card, bro, but we gonna let you know what's going on. You feel me? So, when do you think that the concept of blackness first uh, came into the minds of African people? I'm not here for that kind of discussion. Oh, okay. he's asking you a question, bro. Just answer it. Not my well, so, okay, perfect. Hold on. Perfect. Do you want to answer? You don't want to answer? You, that you don't want to answer? I don't want to answer. And that's also another have... problem I have with Christians when it comes to free thinking. I don't. It's like have, a lot of ducking an and dodging. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, yep. but let me answer that from my perspective. That's how I used to be too. A lot of ducking and dodging, bro. Okay, right? So the first time that this. Oh no, we don't want to talk about that, bro. It's, it's, it's just it's God. It's God only. God only. I love God only. That's it. Concept of unity through blackness, I believe, uh, proliferated through African minds, was when diverse Africans from West Africa were shackled together on slave ships and they couldn't speak to each other. Yeah. Right. They could yeah. not speak to each other. Right. But there were things that they noticed. Right. And what they noticed is our hair is a certain way, mm -hmm. and our skin color is a certain way. Right. The people who are doing this to us, their skin color is a different way. So when they couldn't speak and they had no cultural relevance was when blackness became was important and was when black people needed to put blackness above everything else. I personally believe that black people all around the world, when it comes to intersectionality, I believe that they need to put race before anything else. You predate Jesus, you predate Muhammad, you predate as an African woman. Dang. Oh my gosh. Well, that boy. I think it's studio quality, bro. Every biblical figure that walked this earth, right? So what's more of a divine command? You being black or you being Christian? And here's where I get upset, right? Because we talk about how, oh, um, I don't want to be this, a part of this black cultural movement, this, that, and third, and, and all these different things. Forget BLM, bro. Forget BLM movement, bro. They made 82 mil and didn't give a dime to nobody, bro. What are you talking about? I want to explore my own experience as a black person and da 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 and then you go to church black church and then there's white jesus over the wall yeah right and then you talk to you talk to black people and be like what color is god oh 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 it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what color god is right, right. but it does matter if you are a woman or a man of the cloth how does that not matter to your book because in the bible the so let's let me ask you something let's in that. the bible let me let bro keep finishing this, right? yeah yeah, yeah. Bible, he's speaking right now is jesus um is his appearance in the bible uh, I believe they describe him with like his feet were bronze hair. and hair was yeah. his feet was black as brass and his hair was out of wool. James Harden, <laughs> James Harden, LeBron, you what? James Harden is in the Bible? <laughs> the black church is better than the white church. <laughs> Hey, I'm on the atheist side, there, you feel me? Hey, I still love you, guy, you feel me? But hey, atheist side, hey, I'm on the middle ground of their side, bro. I'm, I'm stepping up over there. Hold on, let me let me uh, position myself like these. Hold up. Join our middle ground Patreon to watch this exclusive prompt. The churches help black people more than the government. Oh, wait. The churches help black people more than the government? <clears throat> you hesitate a little bit. It's... Yeah, totally, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Low key. It's like a, yep. a two headed sword, right? Because church is some place that we can go, gather. It is very helpful to the community in the sense of. It's so sad too because like, the atheists going up to the going up to the table when like, I would go up, like I would go up to this because I believe that the church does help black people more. Ooh, well actually, ooh, ooh, wait, hold on, I don't know, bruh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It depends. Cause hey, they, hey, them black people will get their stimulus check, but they'll owe they'll owe another sixteen hundred in taxes, my boy. We can be there together. We can have conversations with one another. Yeah. At one point during slavery, it may be the only place you can see your family or connect with one another. Yeah. A lot of churches can help build different programs within the community. But I think again it comes back to that word of like wanting to assemble someplace wanting to be with people that look like you. And a lot of the church movement did have to force the government's hand of like, all right, we need civil rights. 
So that was kind of birthed and, you know, pushed through in that way. So, no, I don't trust the government. And I don't think the government is here to help black people. I don't think the government is here to help really any poor people. And a lot of black people, unfortunately, are disenfranchised. So this is interesting that all the atheists step forward. So I I go back to uh, history after slavery and reconstruction. Right. Mm. So after slavery, there were blacks in Congress. No, there was black. There was black progress. However, uh, once reconstruction ended and there were racist people that were brought in power to look, look hey, he on a side too look look at him look he on a side too look, he trying to hear every word they got to say boy just Dis- disfranchise because bro christians be one-minded it's just one mind oh oh wh- why are you going to the quran bro wh- what are you doing what you mean i'm still christian i still love jesus bro what you mean what what's good i can't learn something else and now i'm now i'm in the wrong bro they be one-minded, bro. You can't be one-minded. This is why people perish. They perish because of what? Lack of knowledge, bro. What? So I'm, I'm only going to read the Bible. Well, bro, you need to learn what how money works and, and what you're supposed to do with your money. Uh, you can look at the Bible, yeah, because the Bible does say to invest your money. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, sir. But it, it doesn't explain like in depth like, what you do, like all this other stuff, bro. You feel me? Black black folks. Mm-hmm. Um, there were many churches in the religious community that helped support um, in times when you know black folks couldn't get good jobs, who could not get mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know a good education, even though there were historically black colleges and universities. I, I do tend to give the church its credit at times, mm-hmm. and again, that doesn't mean. Look, once again, hey, she just here to be here. Look, she just following what they ain't doing, bro. She knows she want to sit down. You know, the, the black church gets to define the black community in its entirety and that it should find all of us that way. But uh, we have to give credit historically where More it's credit due. Is due. The U.S. government has had a lot of policies to keep African-Americans down mm-hmm. for the past, ever since after slavery and even before. So we also had um, redlining, which yeah. kept mm-hmm. black communities. Redlining is a systematic denial of services such as mortgages, insurance, loans, and other financial services to residents of certain areas based on their race or ethnicity. Uh, poor and away from certain jobs in the inner city, white flight. I read it because y'all, y'all probably not going to be able to see it when y'all watching the vid because I'm in the way of it. All these things, all these were perpetrated and supported by the U.S. government in every single major city in the United States. But the one place that where black people, we can come and congregate was the church. It was kind of a de facto And get place. information. And get yeah. information. Yes. So my question to all of you guys as atheists who st- stood up for this one for sure. is, do you guys view it as more of a lesser than two evil situation where you guys just really distrust the government? So why you guys have created this prompt? How would you answer that? Oh. See, even the way that you worded the question, the lesser of two evils, because evil is a word that gets really I, I meant that in just like a phrase. No, I know, right? I know. Yeah. But I'm just saying the underlying tones of just like, the American community. And, and look, they just, look, they just having a conversation, bro. And therefore, it's projecting as a domination throughout the world, right? I'd say the lesser two entities in this yeah. instance. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The church itself, it's about what it doesn't do. It's not about how it hurts the community. It's about what it doesn't do, not mm. what it does do, mm. right? So I think that with the government, for every new deal that you get, you get um, a war on drugs. For every welfare system that's, uh, that's implemented, we get cracks and gun in our community. Yeah. Right. So I believe that when it comes, the um, I believe that the black church historically has been us jobs, um, organized our movements. Without the black church, we would not be here today. Let's 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 get that straight. Exactly. Yeah. Right. They were very important, but today they don't have the same value historically. And mm. the government just um, after the George Floyd protests, the two major bills that were passed, even though they passed a thousand oversight bills for police uh, police brutality. The main bills that they passed was, I believe, an Asian hate bill and an LGBTQ hate bill. So I don't think that the government is necessarily, I believe that it's too overstretched. And also let's, um, let's, let's take it to the reparations um, discussion. Yeah. About how there were supposed she to- She don't know what the freak she just said. She just said, yeah. Like she don't know what the freak she talking about. What in the world? Be reparations after yeah. slavery. Yeah. I still want my 40, 40 acres, acres in a mule. 40 acres in a mule. And, 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 so, and that was thwarted <laughs> yeah. through the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. 
So we can definitely even point to that. And we are still having this discourse yeah. about yeah. reparations and economic justice <laughs> that we shouldn't be having now, yeah. that the federal government could have yes. resolved yeah. a while, exactly. long time let's, ago. And still we'll hold, let's, let's hold, yes. um, let's bring the disagreeers. The Eight Sleep Pod Cup. It's a liquid-cooled mattress topper that is clinically proven to give you better sleep. So let me tell you why I love it so much. What do you want like to start? Yeah, I'm a little bit neutral when it comes to the stand. Oh, she finally talking. But she finally got something to say. Let's see what she got to say now. Okay, huh? Let's see what she got to say. What do you want like to start? Yeah, I'm a little bit neutral when it comes to this standpoint because I feel that there was a lot of redlining. You brought up such a great point. But it's I good though because she's listening instead of like, huh? Ah, huh? Ah. Ah, you feel me? I was exposed to the amount of redlining that the government had imposed on black communities, minority communities, especially what's happening up in San Francisco right now, up in New York. It was it was bizarre. Um, and that had pushed a lot of Christian churches, a lot of churches in, in general to open up assistant living, open up um, food uh, shelters and home shelters for, for assisting in people that the government wasn't doing. But at the same time, the church was also pushing this on the government, um, on their local legislators and their mayors to also make uh, movements and propositions to do that. So it's kind of like this fine line between both. I don't trust the government. I don't trust also completely like people who run the church because they're not all good people. They're not all good people that who we elect as well into um, our branches and legislator governments and stuff. So there's just this neutrality that I'm sit between with because is it really going to benefit or are these just propositions to just just temporarily save someone's butt and then go on to the next and then just continue to like put the bandaid on the big scar? I, I ask myself, why didn't I walk up in, in favor of the church doing more and at the risk of giving any ammo for the other side? Yeah. <laughs> no, at the risk, I, I think I look at the church um, with a very critical eye. I think that I um, I'm troubled by what we do and what we don't do. I'm troubled by how we do some of the stuff that we do and we miss the bigger pictures, right? And, and so I, for that reason, I had, to, I had to just hold back and say, I don't think that we're doing all that we should be doing. Sorry to interrupt, but what are some specific examples of that? I, I think that we've gotten into this Western world mentality where church now is, is gimmicky. I think that it's about um, becoming so seeker friendly um, and we, we, we play to certain audiences, we play to certain things. Um, no, bruh. No, bruh. It's not about seeker friendly, bro. It's about encouragement, bro. We trying to encourage people to come to church instead of judge them to come to church, bro. No, bro. It's not seeker friendly, bro. No. If it's seeker friendly, friendly to you, then you too judgmental, my boy. It's facts. We code switch organizationally, if, if you, you know, can believe that. Uh, you can have a church over here where everybody is praying for healing, but everybody's broke. This church over here is a church of prosperity. This church over here is a church of tongue talking. So you've got these different characteristics that if there's no balanced theological view of it. And so I think the church runs the risk of showing up impotent. In mm -hmm. And that's what's going on with a lot of these black churches, bro. You feel me? They get a, they get a couple dollars like bro. I used to go to this black church, bro. They get a couple dollars and they get they they keeping it. They not even giving it into the the, the basement flooding and and you not even paying for it for that. You paying for a hu humongous house and John like like bro what? Conversations that we need to have. I how much I, money does your church make a year? This is important. How much money does your church make a year? I don't have that number at the top of my mind. I wasn't coming to talk about the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, but hey, but we, we come in here to talk. You feel me? We trying to get a middle ground, my boy. Like, how much your church making and you not helping the, the, the world save the world? You helping yourself? These suckers these suckers putting the money in their own pocket. Look, just like those. Like, bro, what? Shoot, I need some money too. I'm giving it to you. Shoot, can you give me some of that back, bro? Okay. No, okay. That's very important. The reason why I bring it up is because we're talking about what the black community, uh, what the black church does for the community, right? And if you are Ooh. taking money from uh, from the black participants who go to your church, you mm. shouldn't know how much money you take from the community, especially since the community uh, isn't financially stable. Yeah. But also churches that make over a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, ah, sure, ah, you got me. He's like, ah, you got me. Cause hey, this suck. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Hey, here's your money. Here's your money. Oh, I'm gonna I'm a get a whole ranch. I, I'm gonna get a house with this. These suckers got cars and, and, and a pool in the backyard, bruh. You feel me? Like, these suckers adding accessories to the church, but not adding money to, to your people's pockets? Like, come on, bruh. $1,000 per year. 
should do exactly what the black church used to do during this the This dude after. Hold on, let me. What you hollering at, bro? Stop all that hollering, boy. You gonna get your toy? Get your toy, here. You want it? You want it? Give me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, what the? Oh. Right, so, I think I think so, that's a harsh so criticism. I think it's a, I think it's a huge assumption. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So so churches that do make over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, they need to invest that money in the black institutions. Yeah. With all due respect, wait, wait, hold, I do want to hear from the wait, response. Wait, what? Hold on, what? So so church. So, so, I think I think so, that's a harsh so criticism. Dollars per community. Uh, Look, he getting defensive. Where where you putting that money, my boy? Where you putting that money? From the black participants who go to your church, you should know how much money you're taking from the community. But since the community uh, isn't financially stable, yep. but also churches that make over $100,000 per year. I'm telling you, bro, these churches be pocketing that money, bro. They don't, bro, they don't care about you, my boy. They do not care, bro. They don't care. They just want this. Most of these artists y'all listen to, they do not care about you, bruh. They just want this. I'm telling you, my boy. I'm telling you. Should do exactly what the black church used to do during the civil rights era. So, I think I think so, that's a harsh so criticism. I think it's a, I think it's like once they get big, they do not care about you, bro. They don't care. This all they cared about. It don't matter, bruh. That's why you don't see them in your comments no more. That's why you don't see them. That's why you don't see them commenting on your comment that you just commented, bruh. I know it's a lot of comments, but my boy, you can answer every single one of them. I do it. You feel me? Huge assumption. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Finish. So, so churches that do make over $150,000 a year, they need to invest that money in the black institutions. Yeah. With yep. all the respect, wait, wait, hold, I do want to hear from the It's response. crazy. What, how would you you can start a bank with that. How would you respond? I think we have to be careful about drawing assumptions of what churches do. I was making a very broad commentary about how I see churches behave, but don't get me wrong, there are a lot of churches that are doing exactly what you just said they should be doing. Turkeys and shoes aren't enough well, for our community. Well, well, nah, see, for real, think, for real, it's not. Like, bro, you can give me some clothes, but you gonna get me off the streets? You gonna judge me and, and judge what I do, but you gonna help me pay this bill, this bill next month? Get into awesome, that part of That's it what I thought. Turkeys and shoes are not the conversation I'm having. I'm having a conversation about a methodology to reach a people and be a service to a community. I'm talking about down payment assistance so that black folks can own homes. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about doing financial stewardship education courses. I'm talking about, you know, counseling and support systems for family and standing in the gap for mothers with single, the, the single mothers with children mm -hmm. and making sure that they have mentors for their sons and their daughters. I'm talking about programs mm -hmm. that actually affect folks' lives. Yeah. But yeah. meanwhile, you're on a different page and I get that. I get that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't brush. Uh, what did, uh, what's his name? Dang, I forgot his name, bruh. That boy built a school, bruh. Built schools for people to come to. That's actually cheap enough for you to go to, bruh. These $60,000 schools that you want to go to, bruh, ain't going to cut it, my boy. Pockets, pockets empty. Pockets empty, bruh. Ain't got nothing for this, bro. You feel me? Watch that very broad because there are a lot of ministries that are doing it. What I'm looking at is the impact of the way this division amongst the body of Christ actually shows up in the world. I think it shows up a little bit less impotent than it should. And on, my, on, on behalf of the body of Christ, I apologize that you've seen that more than you've seen the effective work. Is that fair? No, no. <laughs> No, no, it's not fair. And once again, when we, uh, when you dive into this with Christians, I, I, I love it too, bro. Speaking, he letting, he letting these suckers know. Look, he, he letting these suckers know. Yo, I know my history, and I know my education now. You feel me? Like he, like he's no, uh, uh. Uh uh, this uh, I don't appreciate this. You feel me? I often feel that there's this, this neglect for politics. Jesus was a fighter. Jesus was a fighter. He was, he was not anti -capitalist. pacifist. He was not pacifist. He was right. anti capitalist, right? So, 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 all what you're saying is very good. And I respect the fact that you are a leader, right? And that you do own your own black church, right? But there needs to be more. I, I, I don't want you just meeting with mothers, right? If my grandma is, is funding her own displacement every single time right. she donates to the church and they put their money at Chase Bank. Yeah. You understand that, right? 
I guess like what specifically would you like? What's the more happen? that you're looking for within the churches I for need, the black community? I need I need that I need the church to put their race. I need all black Christians to put their race either on the same level or a or above Christianity politically, mm. not socially, politically. Yeah. Right? We need to as a pastor, you need to preach that the church needs institutions. Otherwise, every single time that our grandmas go and pay tithes, they are funding their own displacement. How is that better than white supremacy, though, if you're asking us to be supremacists about being black people? Who said anything? Well, you brought up do white supremacy. Do you, you know you what supremacy up, entails? Yes, yeah, I know what you're about to say. I know what you're about to yeah. say. However, you, you have brought up white supremacy several times, but now you're saying put your blackness about, above everything. Black is the only way yes. to think about it. And that's, yes. that is yes. a supremacy. Okay, but not in that way. It's not like, okay, black people only matter. You feel me? It, in and of itself, no, it's which I can respect your, your- It's so funny how she looks at people, bro. The only way yes. to think about it. And that's, that is yes. a supremacy. <laughs> look at, in, in like, why are you looking at my boy like this, bro? Like, what in the world? She likes you. I'm gonna give me a man tonight. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Which I can respect your 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 opinion on that, mm -hmm. but I don't operate just because of my blackness. There's so much more to me as a human, a woman, yes. and other things. An American, yes. like there are things that are intersectional about me as a person in this world. That's not just. But God didn't make us not like it. It would it would be different. You feel me? It would be different if God made everybody look the same or everybody have the same same color you feel me like everything has to be about my race mm -hmm. and i have a problem with that in just that that thought in general that mm -hmm. everything must be seen through the eyes of being black and yeah. if you don't get your black card well i think this what he's crazy. trying to say is, let me answer it yeah, go ahead so i never told you to use your blackness to make anybody else feel inferior by the way of their race mm -hmm. so no no i'm not spreading black supremacy what bro you want to go out there you want to go go ahead go ahead bro He just want to look out the window. He just want to look out the window. And I find it often that racist white people and black people in the church love to call me racist, bro. I'm not even. Love to call me racist and it's a pussy. I am not. What, what, what but that's what she's implying, bro. Just because you didn't say it, you implying it. Hey, so that's the thing. I'm not the church in the way that you're trying to label me. Let him clarify. Let him clarify. Yes. So what I'm saying is that like, hey, like, hey, yeah, 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 chill out, chill out, let, 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 let my boy explain, bro. let my boy explain. You are a part of the black power movement, and if you are conscious of what goes on in the black community, then there is no... No way in hell that you will put being gay over being black, you will put being a Christian over being black, you will put being a woman over being black, you, the, you can get disabled. You can get disabled, but that's about it. That's about it. But there have, is no reason in the world. You have black people entire identities on their sexuality and being gay as well. So what about that? The reason why- You don't have why, a problem with that because if they're not Christian, then it's okay to be gay and black, right? It depends on how you oh, align yourself depends. politically. I just yeah. said you guys can be Christian. You but guys can be Christian, but you need to prioritize blackness. Is, isn't our existence more than our political stance? That's force <laughs> fed to you, brother, to no, no, be no, 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 no. It's my belief. It's well thought out. I believe that who I am as a person has is, is very much more broader than what you're describing I should be. Right. I think that I, I just do. Now, am I for the cause and the advancement of black folks? Absolutely. How? Glo globally. How? I, I'm not here to prove my blackness to you. I'm no, here to talk about I'm talking about the difference, the chasm between you and I with yes. the belief system. And what I'm saying is, while I respect you, you got to respect me for this conversation to be fluid. Absolutely. Right. Because mm -hmm. I'm not challenging you or, or diminishing what you believe. I'm Facts. listening to you and I understand you're come from. But the only way we experience another, another culture is that we explore our commonalities. So I get your passion. I get your passion and I, de I definitely do the work in our community. And if you're suggesting that we should probably do other work, then let's have that conversation because having a conversation that makes me feel like I need to surrender my black card is a conversation that gives us more of a chasm so we never get there together. Why in the that face becomes of another pro blackness, schism. why in the face of pro blackness, everyone else's blackness feels diminished? That's insane to me. No, because it's the That's what I'm saying is that a portion, of what you say. a portion, a portion of your energy and time needs to politically go into black institutions and black politics in order for us to get a foothold in the Says country. you, but no, you're not an authority no. for me. You're not an right. authority no, my brother says all black folks. Science. No, 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 let's political science step, is my authority. Step back because I think we're getting too wrapped up actually. Wait, hold on, why is she on this side? I thought she ages. 
What's going on here? She didn't switch sides? In the black part of it right now, and I think ultimately yes. I understand a lot of what you're saying, and you're specifically talking about capitalism, right? No. And how it affects black people in the world. No. No, okay. So you <laughs> are talking about putting blackness above everything else politically. The reason I like Come on, bro. I'm trying to watch, bro. That should get interesting, bro. This is getting interesting, bro. In the world. Do you guys feel like, um, do you guys feel like uh, black people and Africans are oppressed globally? Yeah. And in America? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, so, so we all have that common belief, right? Okay. So, system, uh, systemically, right? The only way for us to beat systemic racism is for us to get institutions of our own, right? The only way for us to get out of this oppression, right, is for us to stop playing around with everyone else's beliefs and ideologies and focus on an Afrocentric belief. That's what I'm saying. You guys can do whatever you want, love everyone, be whatever type of intersectionality that you would like to be, right? But if you support Israel and Gaza, if you're putting that on your story, then I need you to put the Congo on there as well. Yeah. I well, need you to put Haiti on there as well. Do you know well. how many black Catholics are being murdered by other black Africans in Nigeria Thank right you. now? So let's that, talk but, but, about no, that. but you but you haven't said anything about this. It's all about what's going on in the blackness. You're assuming that we don't think about these things. I think about these things. I I wasn't thinking about it. He done just brought it to mind, bruh. I done only heard about Palestine and, 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 and Israel uh, going at it in John. I ain't hear about no Nigerian people getting killed in John. And, and, and where they from? No, I'm highly aware of them. I'm highly sensitive. So it's not fair for you to say that just because we're black Christians or we're black American Christians or whatever, that we don't think about these things. We do. We might see things in a different way or a different, you know, way just, of, of solution. But I just it doesn't feel mean black that we're people, not there. We, we don't think it's important. I just feel as black, yeah, I just feel as black people in our community, we put an overly emphasis on Jesus and on yeah. the church. And like, and in, in a lot of poor black communities, you'll see a bunch of churches, but you know what you won't see? You won't see a bank. You won't see a, a hospital. Store. You won't even see a grocery store with like good food. Nah, for real, bro. I go down to Dayton, bro. Them suckers ain't open, bro. There's a food mart with gates and junk on it. Like, bro, I can't get in here, bro. Like, this is the only store nearby, bro. I can't even get in. Bro, the door is crooked. Like, bro, the, the, the spaces are, are, are like this. Bro, I gotta, like, oh, oh, look right behind me. And I gotta move like these, my boy. You feel me? Like, I mean, yeah, he's speaking facts. He's speaking facts. Like, bro, these these suckers love God. They love Jesus, but they greedy, bro. It's this. They're greedy. This is all they want. The churches. This all they want, bro. This all they. That's it. You know, you go to a liquor store or something. There's an error behind the liquor store. There's yeah. people that don't look like us. These are issues that aren't even addressed by the church. It's like, they, like sometimes I feel I go to a church, they don't even care sometimes. You know, they just want more members. You know, nah, and for real. Because it is. More members gets you this. Yup. Come on, give it to me. So I can have a big house. Give it to me. So I can have more acres. Give it to me. Uh, that's all I want. And then people... People get on people. Do oh, why are you making money from Jesus? Shoot, sometimes I, sometimes I, I think I, I think the same thing. Like, why are we making money from Jesus if we just gonna be greedy about it? This is what happened with Jesus. This is why Jesus flipped tables, bro. Cause suckers money laundering. Suckers stealing your money. I'm telling you, bro. Person who grew up in a black community and grew up in a in a in a black church, I understood these problems even when I was young. You know, so these are things, these are problems that us as black people need to come together and figure out and stop building so many churches in our communities. How many Ab Ebenezer Baptist churches are there? <laughs> Not for real. You know no, I see a Baptist church everywhere I go, my boy. <laughs> everywhere you see bro. Oh, well, that's a church. Money. That's another church. Money. And people just, we just, here, here you go. You can have it. You can have it. There you go. What about these people on the streets? Who need money, bruh? Cause I, pff, you go, bro, you go to a church, a nearby church, bruh, they ain't gonna give you no money, but they gonna give you prayer. Uh, we could give you prayer, my boy. But like, what, you not gonna give me nothing? Like, I'm coming to you. I need help from you. You can't give me no money, bruh. I need help, bruh. I need $500 for rent next month, bruh. You gonna give it to me? Oh, I'll give you some prayer. This is what the Bible says, bro. What good is prayer when you not gonna give them nothing, bruh? It's in James. Shoot, I'll look for it for y'all, bruh. I'll put it on my story too. It's in James, bruh. 
What good is prayer if you're not going to help them out? What's the point? What I'm saying, right, we don't need that. You, we need, yeah. If you're going Last to walk thoughts. as Christians and have the black church, there, there should be, we should be helping the poor, we should be helping the orphans, we should be helping the widow, we should be helping the single mothers, we should be helping the disenfranchised, and that is a part of Christianity. And the fact that that is not happening, I totally agree that that is a, that is a problem. So we are absolutely on the same page about that. I have considered exploring other religions or leaving the church. Anyone with $10,000 or more in credit card debt or personal loans may qualify for help from National right, Debt Relief. Year, Getting right. started is easy. Exploring other religions or leaving the church. Yup. Yup. Well, I yes, have sir. left the church because I grew up in it. It wasn't for me. I, especially once I became a high schooler, started hanging out with different crowds of people and seeing how different people live, expanding your bubble. And I had my first um, friend that identified as being LGBTQ. And my parents did not like that. Couldn't, didn't want me hanging around this you're person. You're cut and off, strictly bro. Because they Anything other than Christianity, you're done, buddy. You're done. That's why these, they, these Christians, one, single-minded, bro. One-minded. That's it. Now, it does, it does allow you to get away from confusion. You feel me? It does. But at the end of the day, bro, like, bro, I'm still keeping the faith. You feel me? It don't matter. I believe that because they were homosexual, they were going to lead me into a life of sin. And that person's going to die and go to hell and be punished just because of their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then I was already questioning, even when I was a little kid, things about the church. I'll tell you this. Hey, most of the Christians that y'all think going to go to heaven... These suckers Pharisees, bro. These suckers is Pharisees. Because of that one fact, I was like, I can't keep doing this. I need to be somewhere where people feel accepted because if it's something with some sexuality, then I could go to another church. It'd be something with my blackness or being a woman or something else. There's always gonna be some dividing factor. I also went through a lot of trauma. I had lost like three people that I loved all like in a row. Um, and the question kept coming up of, yeah, what does happen to us after we die? I don't just think that it's a heaven and a hell. There has to be something more than this. Yeah. And when I brought up these questions within the church, I was really like shunned for it, pushed away. Yep. Um, more people just didn't have They're like, ah, nah, 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 just believe that. Like, nah, I don't believe that. Like, it's like you can't have, it's like you can't have questions. You feel me? It's like, it's like you, it's like you go up to, it's like you can't even question God. Bro, I'm a question God, bro. I don't give a damn, bro. He done put me here for a reason. I go and he gave me a mouth to speak. I'm going to have something to say. Answer for me. Um, and I thought I began to see that fear even within my own parents because they didn't oh, want to. Okay, I guess, you, I guess you can sit anywhere you want because he on the atheist side now too. But he's like, bro, like, what's the point of, you feel me? But it's just like this. Look, it's just like this. We love we i love white people you feel me i love atheists look he's sitting on the side of the atheist people you feel me it, it, it's not just it's not just a you feel me like it's not we always just fighting but we always you know end up coming to each other's sides bro we always end up understanding what people got to say a question their belief that's a cornerstone for them that's their comfort i feel like for me um i've questioned leaving the church early on in my uh early years of of faith. My parents went through a really nasty divorce um, so much that it had scarred my mom that she has walked away from religion in general. She has walked away from God and um, doesn't, doesn't go to church. I think my brothers have seen that and they are now grown young adults and they don't uh, believe in that as well. Um, and there was a low point in my life where I tried to reach out to people and I just wasn't getting the answers. I wasn't understanding uh, my purpose and my reason in life where I was second guessing my existence. Naturally, we are curious beings and so I was just naturally diving deep into my word, diving deeper into understanding like why am I going through what I'm going through and is this something that I blame God or is this something that is the free will and the sin that is just corrupted in, in humanity um, that I have no control over but there's still choices that I can make that can overcome the challenges that I'm going through. Um, so that's personally and with the church that like yeah, I've experienced. I left the Catholic Church. I left it and what I didn't leave was a was a central belief in God mm. so I was more agnostic than I was Christian Catholic. And the reason why I left it was because of the rhetoric that I constantly heard. I was in a, I grew up in a protected bubble. Okay. I grew up in a Catholic church. I went to Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school. I went to Fordham University, a Jesuit Catholic college, right? 
But for me, it was more of that question of how dare you as a black person believe in white Jesus. So I, for myself, okay, show me what you got. I went, why you got that face? Like, <laughs> in white Jesus. So I, for my. Look, why you in that face? You like, what's going on? Huh? What's he talking about? Myself, okay, show me what you got. I went through Islam. I even went to the five percenters, okay? Yeah, Had the, yeah, 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 yeah. The Israelites, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Buddhism, oh, okay. And I even went to the black church because I figured if I'm gonna be Christian, I'm black. Why are you a Catholic? Go to the black church. So my favorite place to go outside of the Catholic church is West Angeles, honey, okay? I'll be in there, that is my spot. But what changed for me? How did I get back to Catholicism? Well, we all believe in communion as Christians is that that's something that we, we hold for ourselves. And when we had communion at West Angeles, this is where we have some divide between all of us, right, as Christians. The presence of Christ in the Eucharist is something that for me was a real thing that I cannot let go because of what he told us scripturally. So I think for me, my experience, even though I left, I was in apostasy for a while, I have an appreciation for whatever, and a respect for whatever it is that you feel you are called to, so. Do you think this human experience of religion is due to the discomfort of death that humans have? Yes. 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 Well, it, but, but, yeah. but for, for Christians... Wait, what? Of death. Do you think this human experience of religion is due to the discomfort of death that humans have? Yes. 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 Well, it, but, but, yeah. but for, for Christians... Wait, what did he ask? Death. Do you think this human experience of religion is due to the discomfort of death that humans have? It's due have? to the... Yup. A lot of people... Yup. <laughs> Bro, a lot of people are so afraid to die because they have no clue what's after this. And if they did die, if heaven and hell is real, they always suspect that they're going straight to hell, bro. Because everyone judges them, bro. Everyone's like, oh, if you do this, you're going to hell. Oh, if you do that, you're going to hell, buddy. And we're just like, bro, can you allow us to live, bro? Can you allow us to experience life on our own and mis and our own mistakes and make our own mistakes on our own, bruh? Like, please. Yes. 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 Well, it, but, but, yeah. but for, for Christians, Christianity, we are not afraid of death. Mm -hmm. We look forward to death. I am looking forward to I look forward to it. You hear me? I'm ready to go, bruh. I'm ready to get up out of here, bruh. This world is boo-boo. I hate it. I hate every minute. To the day I die. Girl, we scared. We scared. No, no, no. I ain't scared. Shoot, I die right now. I don't give a damn. I do not care, bro. Mm -hmm. Not afraid, bro. Yeah. Not afraid. Let me finish that. Let me finish that. My father died. My father died the day before my birthday last year. It was a shock to me. But for dying is a blessing. That's a blessing, bro. To be here and to suffer. And then finally you get to rest. It don't matter. I don't care. It don't matter. I get to rest at least for a good little while. You feel me? Like, bro, I don't care what nobody says, bro. For me, I know where my father is as a man who believed in God to the day he died. He is with him. In my belief, he is with him. I will see him again. So. I, I think as an, as an atheist, I'm even, I'm scared of the concept of death or like the process of dying because it is such an unknown. I, I, I try to spend more of my time thinking about- I'm just, I'm just afraid like of how I will die. You feel me? Like I'm not trying to be tortured or nothing. You feel me? Like that would be, that would suck. If it's for Jesus, it is what it is. It's what I got to do. But like, if it's just for something that like, you know what I'm saying? They wanted my money and I, I didn't know where it was or something. Like, I would be like, dang, bro, why you got to torture me, bro? Like what I'm doing while I'm alive. So that when that time does come, um, you know, one thing I've always said is that the, the only life after our deaths are the legacies we create while we're here. Mm -hmm. That's what lives on, whether it is, whether it is good or bad. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, the, the concept of death, yeah, I mean, or like the process, it still scares me. I, I'm more curious. That there's a reason, I think that there's a reason for that. I, I don't think death is supposed to happen to us. Mm -hmm. at, like, yeah. As a Christian, all of us humans, we have this visceral reaction to it because that's not how things were supposed to be. If we go back to the garden the and sin. all those things, it's, 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 the sin it's the sin nature of humanity, you know? I have more of a curiosity and an excitement for once it happens, because to me, this is hell. Yep. Like being a, a spirit stuck in a body <laughs> on this planet. With all and then you can't leave? You can't go nowhere else, bruh. You feel me? Guess what? You go to sleep, 
You go wake up the next morning, my boy. This is I, I agree with her, bruh. This is hell. Even though the Bible says you can make this world your heaven, but bro, it's hell, bro, because it is it's heaven and hell on earth, bruh. One day you're happy, the next hour you're sad, the next hour you're happy again, the next hour you stub your toe, and you're like, dang! People being super decisive, I think the only reason they get me to come back down here is like, you can eat food again. <laughs> <laughs> you yep. can eat in, in a way, yep. that we, I think that's, there's a difference. It's like God gives you so much hope, and then he, and then like it just gets stripped away, bro. It's like, dang! Between saying like, I appreciate death and the concept of death, and, and, and what it is, then saying like, I actually want to die. I feel like right. like everybody, nobody wants to die. Right. <laughs> right here, buddy. Right here, take me now. I do not care, take me right now, my boy. Uh, we can still sit but here I mean, and appreciate it. What, 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 what are your thoughts? Well, I never really thought about joining another religion because I was born and raised in the church mm -hmm. and very strict into the church. You know what I mean? Hey, bro, you ain't gotta be atheist, my boy. Just read the Bible, bro. You'll understand, bro. You'll understand. Don't listen to these churches, bro. Don't listen to these pastors, bro. Read the Bible for yourself, bro. That's why I'm still Christian. I, pff, but I haven't been to a church in probably like dang near a month, maybe a couple weeks. It's been a couple weeks, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm still a Bible filled man, bro. Still a Jesus filled man. It don't matter, bro. It doesn't matter. God is spirit. It don't matter. I went to church every day. You know, black church, you're there all day. It wasn't until I, I joined the military and I had a black friend who was an atheist. And I've never met a black atheist ever in my life. And he, you know, he planted little seeds, you know, and he was like, Darius, you were born and raised to believe this. This is all you know. You were beaten with this Bible and they tell you that it's the truth. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Even though there's really no evidence of God actually really existing. I started to think about the concept of hell and good and evil. And I started to go through life situations and realize a lot of things aren't black and white at all. No. And you know, you can devote your life to a God and go to church every Sunday and pray and do everything and you can find- And that don't mean that you just feel like, that doesn't mean you feel like just doing whatever you want now. Okay, just because you don't go to church on a Sunday don't mean nothing. You feel me? Because your pastor go on church every Sunday, but I bet you, I bet you he ain't perfect, my boy. I bet you he not. Something in heaven. That's a good comforting thought, you know. And but the reality is, there's no proof of any of it. Blaze Pascal, oh, I, I, I want to put a, let, a let cherry him talk. on that. Let him okay. talk. <clears throat> me personally, I went to church until I was 14 years old, twice a week. Right. So mm -hmm. every Sunday and every Wednesday, mm -hmm. yep. right. My yep. ass was in the church, right. From, from, from very young, you know, uh, from graduating from Sunday school to actually being around the adults and things yeah. like that. We probably all going through that process. Yeah. Once I started to engage in free thinking, once I got into my uh, former teenage years around like 16, 17, and I was able to kind of um, get away from my family and get into being really into uh, black power struggle. Right. And I found myself um, identifying with my community. Right. And so when I realized black Christians that I came across, were more obsessed with people being gay in the church, mm -hmm. was more obsessed with what the images of Jesus look like. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they had no time, essentially, for um, the things that I believe will help our community. Yep. And so I started to dive into different religions. Mm -hmm. The first religion I dove into was Islam, right? Because I remember going to Harlem and seeing black Israelites mm -hmm. on the streets, right. Yeah. right? And those were the first people who cultivated a sense of blackness in me, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, and, and it wasn't embarrassing, but then I realized that there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of toxicity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then I started to go to Eastern religions and things like that. And eventually I decided to connect my conscious being, right, with my mental being. That's what led me to African spirituality. And it was everything that I personally um, needed, right? in order for me to um, continue to engage with everyone like I love them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of hate. There, there's a lot of hate on the underside of religion. Mm -hmm. So there is a French philosopher, his name is Blaise Pascal. And he has something called Pascal's Wager. Uh -huh. And I think that you can, you can relate to this, regardless of your faith belief. He says that you can make the choice that it's for yourself, that it's better to believe in a God, that there's something, <laughs> at least that there's something, <laughs> It's a good boy. It's a good boy. Got a little doggy right here. Oh wait. Got a little doggy. Hey there. Hey there. Hey. Hey there. Watch out, boo. Watch out. You're probably gonna chill with us for a bit. What the heck? Uh. 
What in the world just happened? Oh my, oh my camera, hold up. Wait, no, my camera's still on. Hold up. Am I tripping? Oh no, technical difficulties, my boy. Oh, this top. Oh, there we go. All right, we back. Okay. Greater than this human condition. Because at the end of the day, what it's going to force us all to do is to look at each other as human beings, to serve mankind with kindness, with charity, with care, right? Yeah. Helping those in need. And to be rewarded at the end of the day that there is a God. But if there is no God, guess what? You still left a legacy of hope on the planet, whether it was a God or not. Yeah. And that's how I think that's we the whole see what if you're wrong thing. It's like an insurance policy for yeah. something but that you're still you have. But I mean, yeah, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Because, bro, honestly, like, I'm, I'm with the Bible just because of the morals it says. You know what I mean? I've read the Bible and I, and I love the morals. But at the end of the day, shoot. Hey, for that, for that policy, my boy, hey, start believing in Jesus, bro. For real, because you never know. You never know, bro. It is, there is, that's like an insurance policy for something that you still do not know exists. And that's, we hear that from can, a lot of Christians, you, the whole can you, castle can you explain wager. Everything? Because I, you I'm cannot, not trying to explain everything. You can't explain everything, everything of the world but, either, you know, but, but you but understand going, science. Uh, uh, let's let her talk. Yeah. Yes. I'm so, sorry. Um, yeah, so this is the, you're, that assumes once again, that if you don't believe in God, that you're not good. That doesn't say and that. that. Yeah, yes, nah. it, that, but yeah, it's that's fundamental exactly. to our. But sorry to cut you off, but I, I feel a lot of this, like this, this belief that says that, like, oh, you're not good if you don't believe in God. Christians believe that they're not good without God either. Like, mm -hmm. we're none of us are none of us are good in our. Some life. Christians, bro, they, bro, they think they they like Jesus, bro. Like, bro, what? You sin every day, bro. You ain't Jesus, bro. Like what? Own right. So to say that like, oh, Christians now have a pedestal to stand up and say like, hey, I'm better than you. Now. They look at, bro, they look at Jesus. They look at Jesus flipping the tables and they like, oh, well, G well, we can do this now. Shoot, look, we, we can, we can destroy and judge everybody now, bro. It don't matter just because Jesus did it. Nah, bro. Jesus said, love your people, bro. Encourage your people, bro. You feel me? No, no, you're not. It's got no, listen, they're <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Christianity is inherently racist. Inherently? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd have to sit. I, I wouldn't sit down for that one. should weigh your budget down. It should lift your teams up. A CRM shouldn't Bro. hide feats. It should. I look at it from a legal perspective as uh, Christianity, as it has been, it was built into law. Mm -hmm. in the United States to classify the the enslaved captives that came over that were brought over transported over from the continent of Africa and used to justify the enslavement as well as the mistreatment of of darker skinned people mm -hmm. um, using the curse of ham that is in the Bible even though the description of Jesus himself was not white as is depicted in, 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 in popular culture. But the Christianity as we know it today and the distinct differences between um, certain non-black non people and, and black folks and other people of color and the conditions of our community certainly imply that it is it is racist. Even within the Old Testament, you're looking at these different groups of people, different tribes going to war with one another, and even, you know, saying that my God wants you to be completely snuffed out. So yeah, it's always been wielded in a way that's been inherently racist. I don't know about that one, but all right. I think this is- It's just either, like, it, it, bro, it's just countries going to war, bro, just because they disagree on some, you feel me? And they want more resources. Same point because I do agree in many ways. Not that Christianity Christianity is inherently racist, but that it was used in very racist yeah. ways to suppress Can people and now? oppress people and enslave people. Mm -hmm. So I I absolutely do agree with that. Um, and, and I think that another narrative, the slavery in the Atlantic slave trade also gets very sticky because you also had African slaves and tribes who were 
betraying their own people to give them away to these colonizers and more. So, I mean, yeah. it's like there's so much murkiness in that entire conversation that it's like one side over the other. Who's the lesser of two evils kind of thing, right? Those who, who are enslaving plus those who sold their, their families to the slavery, you know? Well, there, there were a number of um, captives that were kidnapped. Mm -hmm. um, they, so they weren't necessarily given over. It, it, like you said, it does, it, it does become a very, very murky and very ugly history overall. And so I, I definitely agree that, uh, but yes, the justification, especially through the Catholic Church. If you made it this far, bruh, you'll know, put it in the, if you made it this far, put it in the comments what his name is, bruh. And I, I might give you a little treat. I don't know. We'll see. But his name is Gabe. Okay. This is the doggy's name. His name is Gabe. If you made it this far, put it in the comments, bruh. Put it in the comments. Mm -hmm. And one of the papal bulls, which actually endorsed the transatlantic slave trade. That is historic. That is a fact. Right, right. And so we have to, you know, we, we cannot ignore that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's, that, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Because even as Christians, regardless of our denominations, we have to look at the ugly parts and stand in it and admit it and, and that yeah. these were wrong and this happened, not try to excuse it. Right. So I don't disagree with you on that. Right. There are some really ugly things that the Catholic Church certainly did. And I don't deny that. And the only thing that I would disagree on is the fact that, I, it, listen, I'm going to get it on the internet. I know Jesus was not white, y'all. Okay, so you can't <laughs> yeah, tell right. me my God is a white man. So yeah. inherently in what it is, I don't see the racism in the original, you know, but how it's been used? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think how it's, it's been important. used most definitely. If you have a kernel of truth, and I don't know that we'll all even agree with what that kernel of truth is, mm -hmm. and someone or something falls away from that truth, does, does it make the truth ineffective? Or does it make the falling away the most ineffective thing? Does that make sense? In other words, if there is a God, and I believe there is, but if there is a God and someone distorts that understanding or concept of God, does it make the God ineffective or does it make what they've done? Bro, what is this man doing, bro? I'm trying to watch the vid, bro. I know you want some loving. I know you want some loving. I know you want some loving. I'm trying to watch the vid, my boy. Falling away from that kernel of truth. There's a very simple way that this could be resolved, right? If there is, if there is any type of God, right? It could very much be cleared up by them, by them appearing and, and dispelling. Here's the thing, bro. I can never be atheist, bro. I can never be atheist. Like I could be Muslim or like Buddhist or something, you know, cause there, there has to be a God, bro. I can never just be like, yo, there is no God. Like, because there's, there's certain things that happened in my life where I'm like, you know, like I didn't do this alone. You know what I mean? Like there had to have been something placed there or somebody did something, whoever you feel me? Like, or if we in a simulation or something, bro, like, Something had to happen, bro. There's been so many things that happened in my life where I'm just like, yeah, God is real. Because this, this isn't a coincidence, you know? Like, bro, there's been, like, there was a time where I was on the verge of, like, just wanting to, like, off myself, bro. And God was just, God just placed, it said, choose life, right? On the right side, I was driving. And on the right side, at the, at the right moment in time, it said, choose life. And I'm like, dang, bro, like, God has to be real, bro. There's nothing, I... Like, no one can convince me that God isn't real, bro, ever. This is facts. All of these discourses, all of these different beliefs, all of these different, and, and um, we, it, it could possibly end the conversation or it could end all of this discourse right here. I, I disagree uh, yeah. <laughs> because we believe that he already did that. Yeah, it, it's, it's, well, really, so, it's really common too in the whole We Testament. already believe that and yeah. they killed him. So yes, it's like, because of that. yeah. And I agree, there's, there's a lot of evidence that shows in that. I mean, you guys were talking about evidence uh, earlier and there's evidence in the Old Testament how the angel of the Lord had come in, how he had transformed Saul's life into Paul. There's a lot of evidence in seeing the the, the bush burning on fire, Moses speaking to Moses. Um, and so there is a lot of in that belief of understanding where Christ has come from and revealed himself through that, through Old Testament. The Bible is a book that is that does not have footnotes. Mm -hmm. It does not have points of reference, yeah. which means that it is a book of allegory. It is a book yeah. of stories. It is a book of things that cannot necessarily be replicated today. You can't see this. No one can talk through a burning bush today. If that could be replicated today, then maybe we could see the validity in that. Or well, maybe if you uh, have some DMT. 
which <laughs> kind of leads into a lot of my own personal belief system because I don't actually identify as atheist. I'm probably more agnostic than anything. Mm -hmm. And in recent years, I've come into a lot of African spirituality by way of Ifa, which a lot of people in West Africa would practice some form of Ifa. Mm -hmm. It gets, you know, translated through the slave trade as um, Santeria in Cuba. Mm -hmm. It's showing up in hoodoo and voodoo throughout you know, which the, the church South. deemed as witchcraft. Exactly, exactly. Which it does have elements of that when you get into it, but it's misconstrued Facts. and that lens of Christianity being put on those things has given it a lot of negative connotation when we really did. Guys, once again, read the Bible for yourself, bro. These, these people that what they call witchcraft ain't really witchcraft, bro. You feel me? These people when you kill babies and and you're doing all this other weird junk that's when it becomes witchcraft bro what's evil in the world is people who people who kill babies this is what the bible says who they don't they they um they don't help the widows those are the bad people that's just going around just straight killing just just doing whatever they like you feel me those are the people that god calls bad bro most people out here they doing good bro like you got a good heart. You doing well, bro. Like you trying to stay out of the way of enemy fire. Like you doing good, bro. Got to have survival and a way to still connect to our culture. And a lot of it still was able to survive through sharing that belief. System. Can I can I say something real quick? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm Liberian. So like my parents, they're from Liberia. They're mm -hmm. they're African, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I grew up with a lot of Nigerians as well from the Igbo tribe. Mm -hmm. You know and. I see, and I don't know, are you, are you black uh, American as yes. well? Like, okay, cool. So I see this, this trend of people coming into African spirituality as if to say that that's something that even people in West Africa like believe in. Mm -hmm. But if you interact with those people, like the African people that are over here now, yeah, they probably like don't. They, they, they don't. In yeah, fact, they, 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 they also see it as they also a lot of them also see it as witchcraft because they've also been colonized. Mm -hmm. no, well, see, that's that's another thing. Right. Mm -hmm. If we're going to talk about colonization, then we can't take away those black Africans freedom to also choose a religion for themselves. No, you know? they can totally so choose it's, for themselves. That's yeah. So like issue. so to say that they're colonized and that's why they believe what they believe. I feel like you're looking down on their ability to choose and understand right and wrong for themselves. But it's just and I kind of find that, that they were this colonized, little... specifically Nigeria, because the majority of what I know about myself, my people did come from Nigeria, mm -hmm. that was colonized by the British. So see so, how you have the ability to look at your beliefs, and even if colonization had some type of oppressive thing on you, you still have the ability to choose whether or not that you, uh, that you believe in that. So do the Africans that are over there. They have the ability to look at their colonization, figure out what parts of their culture are disconnected from their religion, and they can still celebrate it. I want to go a little bit into my personal story because I know I'm going to rant a little bit. But I grew up in a African Liberian Pentecostal church in Minnesota. And over there, there's so much culture, like we like not even a drip of it that did I even understand that there was like whiteness like involved, you know. I, I, we, we have the same food. We sing our Christian songs in the same, in a different way than. All right, bro. This is getting a little, this is getting a little long. What's, what's the ending? Ships with other people. Welcome to the future of music creation. Soundtrap. Elevate Ooh. your sound with. Bible. But the reason why I call myself, oh, I have a lot of. Oh, to closing take. Yeah. yeah. For me, oh, remain right. curious. Ask questions. Do your yeah. own research. We should be creating things that we want to see out in the world. Ways that we want to replicate goodness, She's love, speaking. charity, yep. taking care of one another. So ultimately, mm -hmm. that's what's most important. Yep. And, why we and guess what? That's what the Bible says. I make God a he. Like. Facts. <laughs> I love the conversation. I love the yeah. individuality. I love the, 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 um, the commitment to it. I don't have a head to put anyone in. I have a personal relationship and I throw it out and I share it and hopefully it makes a difference on the other person. And if it doesn't, he's given the, the right to not choose it. As we discover who we are as black people, as we discover who we are as people, as we probe into the divine, whether or not it's the universe, whether or not it's some other form of spirituality, that being open to the revelation that I am bigger, I am better, and e eternal life is mine, whether or not that is the reincarnation, whether or not that is in living with him eternally. So. I think that everyone here has uh, beautiful backgrounds and they all gave beautiful stories, you know, and um, my, my, my final thought is just that um, when it does come to black Christians with the historical value of the black church, I do believe that it is inherent for black Christians to dedicate a portion of themselves to the black power struggle and the black men. And that is my final thought. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. W, bro. Hey, W. W. Middle ground, bro. You know, um, I, I probably would support more of the freaking atheist side. Ain't gonna lie, bro. They were speaking facts, bro. But, um, 
I'm still Christian at the end of the day. It don't matter. But you know, it's I I appreciate y'all, bro. Y'all y'all have a good night, bro. For real.